it's like when I listen to people and meet with them and talk with them, and maybe it's the Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. that just nudges me, but I feel it, Mm -hmm. whether they've said anything or not. Mm -hmm. And if I feel that in my heart, then I just ask. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of ten, it's something that they need prayer for. Hey, and welcome to Winning Conversations. We are so glad you're here. We have a treat for you today. We have Miss Betty Lynch with us. How are you today? Good, thank you. We are so blessed to have you. Dan and I, how are you, Dan? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. Good, good. I'm excited for this one. I know, this is going to be a really good one. (laughs) This is a good one. And the reason it is, is because I think Betty is uh, close to one of the original members. You've been here for 22 years, is that what you told me? 22 years. At Heritage? Yes, ma'am. That's, Mm -hmm. that's crazy. I don't know why. I just, I'm just blown away by the amount of people that have had that kind of number mm-hmm. to how long they've been in this house. It's it's just something you just don't you don't see all the time. Well, and people don't stick around in anything mm-hmm. right, for that long of tenure. What has that time been like over the course of your time at Heritage? Oh my goodness, it's just like yesterday. Yeah, it's it doesn't you know when you say twenty two years, it's like twenty two years, <laughs> and yes. it, it's not. It's just newer and better every year. So it's seen a lot, mm-hmm. but it just it's just it gets better and better. Yeah, you've probably seen lots of changes, <clears throat> lots of leadership shifts, a lot of uh, people coming and going. Our house attracts a lot of ministers, you right. know. Yes, and so we see people come in, get built up, and then launch out. Right, and you've done a ton of different roles. Right now, you're the department lead for the greeters, right? Correct, correct. Someone would say you're the greeter leader. <laughs> <laughs> if they were to be so bold as to say that's that. A good, that's a good way to put it. Okay. I was curious if that's what they say on the, that's on the streets. That's one of our leader's favorite. That's one of your leader's favorite, uh-huh. a greeter leader. Right. It rolls off the tongue so I nicely. like it. It does. Yeah. It I does. Like it. Yeah. How is that going? <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's going, it's going great. Um, when we have new people come in, then that's one of the places that they, they normally start at. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just to kind of get the feel of, of how they are. Uh, how the church is, how they're adapting to everything. And it gives me such a great opportunity to to meet so many people. Mm -hmm. And then from there, they either stay Mm -hmm. or um, they'll go to a a different department. But it's kind of like a little training, per se. Mm -hmm. I think, like, not that everyone has to, but I think the those who are successful – in like getting into the, the church and into the mm-hmm. local church, I think there's really is like paths forward for them. Mm-hmm. And serving is almost always yeah, either sure. through like the greeting team, the hospitality team, the youth. Right. There's always those avenues to get plugged in. Mm-hmm. And those who kind of engage in that seem to have amazing results when it comes to how they, how they, I don't want to say like do well, because it sounds like you have to do that, but you don't. No. But those who plug in, right. you see so much fruit being mm-hmm. like from that. It's relationship building. Mm-hmm. Because with the greeters there, they all understand that when people walk through that door, first and foremost, we're representing God and our pastors. But it's loving on people as they're walking in the door because we don't know what they're walking in with. Mm-hmm. And it's it's to make sure. I remember when I uh, first came in, um, I just like, oh, my goodness. It, it was just awesome. And some people come in and maybe they haven't been to church in a few years or maybe they're out searching for their church home. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's so much fun to begin with, but developing relationships with your, your teams, but developing relationships with people coming in the door Mm -hmm. is so important because I know if they're comfortable walking in that door, I know our pastors are going to deliver. Right deliver the word Mm -hmm. and that's it's from the parking lot all the way through into the auditorium like in my background we call it the guest experience Mm -hmm. you know like what's it like when you create those emotional moments for someone it's like Mm -hmm. when you get greeted Mm -hmm. it sets a tone Mm -hmm. it really does like set the standard for what the rest of that service is going to be like right and this church i mean i can remember the first time i Mm -hmm. walked in it does it exceptionally well like Mm -hmm. from the moment in the parking lot everyone's waving to the moment throughout the door it's a warm greeting to the lobby it's just a a continuation of 
just people that genuinely want you to be here for the right reasons. Right. And it's like your team does great. Thank you. They do. They do a great job. And I think a boiling down like what that that cultural experience is mm-hmm. like, it always comes back to the love of God. It always comes back to connecting with people and meet and like like you were saying, meeting people's needs. Right. Um, when you think about all the time that you've been here, what is it that keeps you is it relationally that keeps you coming back? Is it the word? Is it a combination of what is it that keeps you plugged in for twenty two years like you have been? It's the word. It's how our pastors deliver that word because sometimes you can read a scripture Mm -hmm. and you know it and then when the pastor delivers the scripture then something goes off and you're like oh that's what that means (laughs) and so it's how they deliver that word it's they deliver it so well that you can take what they've taught you Mm -hmm. and use it in your everyday life whether if it's your work or your uh, your family, whatever it is, it's just under, how can I say it correctly? It's just understanding God's word. And since they deliver it so well, you can really get it rooted in, inside your heart and soul. Yeah, we get some of the very best teaching here, I think. Absolutely. In the body of Christ. I've said that lots of times on lots of podcasts, and yeah. I still think it's true. It's like, definitely true. You don't walk out without really having a, a grasp on what what has been taught what the to word you. means is i was raised southern baptist okay and my family was uh the church bus driver and my aunt cheryl she was one of the top teachers at the seminary uh college there on marriage classes but they're all in heaven so i can kind of say it now <laughs> 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 but <laughs> but it, It's like, it doesn't matter what you do, you can't do this because you're going to go to hell. Right. Or you can't do that. Can I say that? You can't do this. It's a family show. Could you just watch the swearing? Okay, I just (laughs) didn't I mean, So it it didn't matter what what you did. There was a lot of condemnation along the way with with messing, making a mistake. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I told my dad, because one side was Southern Baptist, the other side was the Pentecostal, which Mm -hmm. back in my day, it was they actually rolled down the aisles. Holy rollers. Holy rollers. Mm-hmm. That's where way. that comes from? Are you serious? <laughs> okay, so we did talk about I've only been saved since oh, I was 19. I'm, right? so, so, I, I'm so sorry. So <laughs> I, I was raised holy roller. Yes. So I was raised uh, Pentecostal in Mississippi. So that's why so, I'm very familiar with the Pentecostal. Right. Like, okay. the whole, like people catch the Holy Ghost. And like they just fall and out yeah. all over the place. Yeah. Yes. And mm-hmm. they seriously, I'll never forget. I was like 10 years old and these ladies were rolling down the aisles and I was kind of <laughs> scared. <laughs> <laughs> so then we went from that right. to. You're going to go downstairs. Okay. <laughs> so I thought, okay. And I told my dad, I said, okay, I'm not going. I'm just not going back to church. <laughs> and so I got in trouble for that. But, and I did go until I got older. Until you got older. Yeah. Yeah. And so coming to Word of Faith has been a, a, a new thing. Oh, or not my new, new now. You've been here for years, but it was new at the time. Right. Yeah. Right. What was the difference though? Like, what was it about this house that changed for you? Mm-hmm. We were like, this is where I need to be. Mm hmm. Um, we participated into Thunder Over Texas a long time ago. Mm -hmm. That was in like the 90s, 80s? Mm, Well, let's see. 2000s? Early 2000s? Early 2000s, I would say. And my bookkeeper uh, that I had at the time for the gym, she heard of Jesse Duplantis wanting to go. And I said, oh, okay. I said, well, that's my church. Then I'll take you. And so I took her to Thunder Over, Texas, and I've never laughed so hard (laughs) in my life that it didn't matter if you were in church or if you were there or wherever, the word was always delivered to where you could take it home with you and understand. Mm -hmm. And I just love it. And every time I think I've heard the best, Mm -hmm. then the... The next one's the best, and the next one's the best. So I just truly believe in in our pastors. You can see that they know the word and that they do the word, and they can tell you what the word's going to do for you if you do the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what's just really um, 
stuck in my heart, mind, and soul. And I think there's a big difference when you know that your leadership is living, walking their walk, walking right. their talk. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think we, we're so blessed at this, at this church because our leadership does an exceptional job right. of, of giving us the word. But then also, when you ever see them, they're walking it out. It's not like it's a, you know, yeah. There's, there's, it's just authentically getting what we're supposed to be getting here. Exactly. And it just, it, that's why I, <clears throat> I think about someone who's been here for as long as you've been here. And it's like, mm-hmm. like, why? Like, I, and I honestly say mm-hmm. that not like a why, right. but like a true, mm-hmm. like, like, why? Like, what is it about? And there's so many people like that with you, same, similar mm-hmm. story that they get here and they're like, I don't want to go anywhere else. Mm-mm. Like, mm-hmm. this is where I want to be. Right. And that's an amazing thing to say that. And it's mm-hmm. such a testimony to this yeah. church and its leadership mm-hmm. when you have people that are like, hey, 20, 30 years of just like community. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing because like, there's people in this church now who are in leadership that you were like, you know, in the youth with. Right. That's. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love it. <laughs> it's such a it's such an amazing culture that you just don't mm-hmm. see that all the time. So when you recognize that, it's just right. it's, it's powerful. Pretty, it's well, pretty. it makes you want to do better for them as well. Mm. Mm-hmm. So when you see where their heart is, right, and you're seeing what they're doing, then it makes you want to do better. But you want to make sure that you're taking care of them as well, so they can deliver the word. Mm-hmm. So. That's really good. Now you do more than just attend church on a regular basis. You have full-time jobs. You have all kinds yes. of things. So I, I know I had heard some very fun branding. Mm-hmm. You owned a gym for 38 years called Better Bodies by Betty. <laughs> That's amazing. It's like some of the I best. I love it. <laughs> Take that, Bodies by Jake, yes. all right? Yes. Uh, what inspired you to, mm-hmm. to do that, to have that gym? To help people. To help. It's, it's, all, <laughs> it's all about people. It's... Um, when we were talking talking earlier about I wanted to be a, a doctor to take care of people. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, and as I was explaining of, of losing someone on my table, I would never be able to forgive myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and for the doctors to it's do that thing. and yeah. be able to continue on doing that for years and taking mm-hmm. care of people. And, mm-hmm. and, and that is, oh, my goodness, they're just the top of the line, but I wanted to do something that would really help people. And, and that's what the gym, the gym afforded you the opportunity to help people. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I've seen people, I've even trained some of the pastors of the local churches here. And, um, it's, it's just amazing. I had one little guy, he was at discovery church off of uh, Woodway. Is it Woodway? I think it was. Okay. And, uh, um, he had to lose some weight, and he had fallen uh, behind the curtain and hurt himself. And uh, uh, he came to me, and he said, I've heard that you don't give up. <laughs> and I said, uh, no, sir. What what can I do for you? Right. Well, he was in a wheelchair. Mm. And uh, um, when he was in the wheelchair, and he, he w- I could not lift him if something oh, sure. would have happened. Right. Right. And so I just prayed, and I said, okay, Lord, you sent him to me for a reason. You're going to have to give me the strength <laughs> to, to do this. Right. And so I worked with him for almost a year. Um, he lost 100 pounds. I know. And I was so determined to get him to walk on stage for his Christmas show for his church. And I want you to know he walked up that ramp. That's what I'm talking about. That's awesome. You know? And, of course, I was in the front row just, <laughs> just boo-hooing. But it was right. something that was, and that's what it's about, is taking care of people and getting them to be the best that they can be. Right. Right. And so you did that for how long were you, had the gym? Uh, 38 years. 38 years. And so, but now you are helping another side of someone's life. And you do financial planning, correct? Financial planning. Mm-hmm. You're just helping people. Educating. <laughs> on all sides. Mm-hmm. What made you get into that one? Well, actually, I did not know one thing about it, and a friend of mine, uh, they own the firm, and uh, I was transitioning from closing the gym uh, from Estee Lauder to mm-hmm. to right. the firm, and uh, uh, I said, okay, well, I can do this. Didn't know anything about it, and so once I got into it and, and really started helping those people, 
it was more of the 55 plus. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, what I had learned is that through the years is that some of the people were being taken advantage of, especially when they got to the Medicare age. Mm -hmm. They were just paying astronomical amounts of money per month on things that they didn't even need. And I thought, okay, well, this is where I can come in and And be help and be helpful for them as well. So. I always think about the ministry and like, well, not that's a weird way to say it, but like, <clears throat> if you look at a stool it has three legs. Mm-hmm. And so like the, the spirit of someone, their body, and mm-hmm. then their, their finances are mm-hmm. three of the most important aspects yeah. when it comes to a Christian's walk. Right. And they cause the most static, the co- right. most, like you stumble mm-hmm. over one of those right. constantly. Right. Uh, maybe not you guys, but <laughs> 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 you know, and so but it's, it's, it's crazy that you went into those specific things to help people spiritually with mm-hmm. your giving. And then to help with their finances and mm-hmm. to help with their body. It's kind of amazing that you've attacked all, all, three, of those. all three of those legs. Mm-hmm. Was that like purposeful or just the, where your heart kind of led you? Uh, it wasn't pers- I didn't do it on purpose mm-hmm. because I didn't know what to do when it came to the financial part. Um, it just, I don't know, I just listened to, to the Lord and kind of guide me and, and tell me on what to do because sometimes you don't know. Mm-hmm. And it's just kind of fallen into that place to where it's still helping people if it's if it like you said on the three legs and I've developed I've prayed even just last week pray for people that come in and they've lost the money in the stock market and and so you're developing those relationships there as well and they've cried in my office and they've gotten mad in the office (laughs) because of losing money in the stock market and when I see that there's a need for prayer, then I ask them, mm. are you a Christian? Because <laughs> you never want to offend anybody. And when they tell me yes, and then I say, well, can we pray? Mm-hmm. And they go, absolutely. Oh, I'm so glad you're a Christian. And then here we go. And I had a sweet little lady come in last week that she's been a client of mine for like six years. Mm-hmm. And she's been diagnosed with a uh, cancer brain tumor. Mm. And uh, uh, she came in and she brought her family in. And that's another thing that we do is that we help the kids. When mom and dad goes to heaven, then we help the kids to know where their finances are and how they can take care of it. But she brought her kids in and she goes, now, she's going to pray for us. So just get ready. We're going to pray. And I said, oh, I love that you said that. I said, do you want to pray? She goes, I do. <laughs> I said, oh. So it's just <clears throat> praying for people no matter where you are. Mm. So when I think of you, Betty, I think of salt and light. And whether you're in the gym doing personal training with somebody or you're in the lobby at the church or you're helping these people get mm-hmm. these financial things that are heavy weights on their life right. straightened out or figured out or organized or whatever, what is it? what is it that is the... Um, what is it that makes that spark on the inside of you to be the light that they need in that moment? And what do you see that they, no, it doesn't matter whether it's their body or their mind Mm -hmm. or their finances, the three things that Mm -hmm. you said, Mm -hmm. what is the one thing that you would want to communicate to them or that you see the biggest need is for them to understand? Um, That's a good, that's a really good question. Um, I, I just, I don't know how to honestly give you a correct answer on that. It's like when I listen to people and meet with them and talk with them, and maybe it's the Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. that just nudges me, but I feel it, Mm -hmm. whether they've said anything or not. Mm -hmm. And if I feel that in my heart, then I just ask. Mm -hmm. And... Nine times out of ten, it's something mm-hmm. that they need prayer for. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's really good. Oh. Not to kind of circle back, but I'm kind of going to circle back to something because <laughs> I just have a question. Yeah. yeah. I, so, so you've been here for, you know, again, two decades at this church, mm-hmm. which is amazing. Like I come here and I've been here for a couple of years and there's an excitement Mm-hmm. in this church like there's an anticipation and right. excitement like it's like something is being we can say being birth being created mm-hmm. like what about where we're at now as a church are you most excited about 
Is there a good s- question. You know what I mean? Like, what is it you've seen so much? Like, what is that excitement? Because, like, it, you seem like you're always excited. Like, well, it, you know what I mean? You have that joy, that yeah, happy, that pep. For like, sure. What, what, is, it ab- light, what yeah. is it about that you're excited for that you see right now coming in the future for this house? Thank you for asking that because I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> it's because I want to see that brand new church. Mm. And I want to see it because I know that that's what Pastor Jerry and Miss Carolyn want. And I want them to see it. I want them to know that all this hard work, all these years that they've started, that they see that. And to be a part of that, oh, my goodness. To see that come to pass, to where Miss Carolyn, you know, that her heart goes out to all the hurting people inside the walls, outside the walls, you know, that gives us just such a bigger opportunity, you know, because we can, we can hold so many more people. But that is what I want to see. That's what I'm excited for is to see, I want to see their face mm-hmm. when those church doors open mm. because that's just going to be a dream of theirs to come to pass. Absolutely. You know? I'm just as excited about that too. I cannot I wait for our new building. I know. When, when we drive by, it. when me and my kids drive by in our car and we see the field right now, it's a field. And who knows uh-huh. when this goes live, maybe it won't be, it will be a little bit more than a field. Right. But when yeah. it's a field, I drive by like, say hi to the new church. Hi, new church. I There's know. our new building. I know. You guys like those playgrounds out there? Y'all like this stuff out there? And just creating that that anticipation. But I am right. anticipating the same way you are. Like, I want to see the people's lives changed and this right. community changed and the dream fulfilled. I right. want to see that harvest. So Absolutely. Well, who yeah. thought Crowley would be so big and it's be exploded. getting so big in yeah. terms of population? Right. And just the perfect time for this to be coming to pass. This mm-hmm. vision and dream that started how long ago? What, 50 yeah. plus years ago? Yeah. I mean, yes. that's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. <clears throat> you just think about like, the amazing buildings in our history around the world. Right. Like they were started and the person that started it never saw it. Right. Never saw it. They had to just know they knew they knew that this was something that was important mm-hmm. that right. we're leaving for the next generation. It's going to be their gift and their blessing. Right. And we have a chance to do this in real time. Come on. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like there's a chance that we can like in their lifetime, you can have a vision and we can see it come to pass before. Ah, yeah. <laughs> right. Come on, before right. Jesus and I just got back. here. So I'm yeah. like, I'll, I'll, I'll jump on the bandwagon. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like for, for sure. sure. But there's so many people. It's so when Miss Carolyn said that about hurting people, right? Is that there's so much more? It seems like now, yeah. In this day and time, I agree. Within the schools, mm-hmm. within the high schools, the the middle schools, the kids, the adults. I mean, it's it's just they need us. I said Esther moment. You know, like for such a time as this, I mean, right. that really is the. There's no time like the present when it comes right. to what the needs are. <clears throat> and it's these communities, there's so many of them that are mm-hmm. just struggling, yeah. right. struggling. And like, then you come here and you're like, well, there's so much, there's, there's so much soil here that you can like, you just life. get, oh, yeah. so much. Literally to me, to the next question I have to ask you, okay. you've been here long enough to know that what we live for at Heritage of Faith, mm-hmm. uh, Dr. Seville is making winners in life, right? Mm-hmm. which you do in the gym and mm-hmm. you do in the workplace and you do in the lobby. Um, what does that statement truly mean when you hear it? To see somebody change right before your very eyes and to know that you had a little bitty piece of it Mm -hmm. and just see somebody grow, Mm -hmm. watch them change, get them to believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that if they come to church and they walk in those doors, they're going to be changed. Mm -hmm. Mm. Powerful. Love it. I love it. I love that question. We've asked it a few times now, and they're always fantastic answers. Mm -hmm. Well, I was honestly really excited to ask you about it because you've been here for so long. You've seen the winners in life come through. You've seen those transitions happen in people's lives, that transformation. One of the words that comes to mind every time I think of heritage is restoration, and you've seen that happen over and over and over again with people in their lives. Yes, and it continues on. Mm -hmm. It's not, okay, we've got, this is how it happened. Now they're Mm -hmm. completely restored. That's not the end of it. Yeah. Right. Right. And that's what we have to do is, is the more confident that people can be, but really understanding the word, then they can move forward Mm -hmm. and make a better life for their kids, their grandkids and, and all the way around and just getting people, because I know that if they come here, they're going to understand the word. Mm -hmm. I know that, but sometimes just getting people 
to come through, through that door <laughs> yeah. makes it a little bit difficult, but you just don't ever give up on them. Mm-hmm. Ever give up on them. Mm-hmm. And even coworkers that you work with, um, they need to understand. I work with um, a little 33-year-old guy that's just amazing. I love his little wife, and they just had a baby, and he's so smart. And he's telling me about his goals and what he's going to do. I mean, I've learned so much from him in the financial industry because that's what he graduated in, and he's stayed in it since he graduated. And he's constantly on his phone because he's over all the security products and and the client's money. It's his responsibility. If the market's crashing, get them out, get them in the cash, get them in the money market. And he's constantly on the phone. And... uh, he said, but I want to hit this goal. And I said, okay. And then he, he does a lot investing in his own money. I said, okay. He can take like $500, and two days later, he's made 3500 off of that $500 because he knows how to do it. And then he started telling me about his goals again. I said, okay. I said, I got a question for you. I said, you're always on the phone, and you spend so much time on the phone have you ever thought about spending some time with the Lord to make it better? Mm -hmm. And I got his attention. I said, how many hours are you doing? You're investing. And I said, and then you're making so much money over here on your investments. Mm -hmm. I said, that is such a blessing to you. And I don't think you realize that that's a blessing to you, that that's a gift that God is giving you to help not only you and your family, but for the clients as well. So why don't you take a percentage of those funds and start tithing? And spend maybe, I don't know, read a chapter in the morning. Just try it. Mm -hmm. Because he debates with me all the time. (laughs) I said, just try it. Give it 60 days. And let's have another conversation. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we're at there. And he came in and he said, Betty, what was that scripture you told me about the other day? And I Mm. said, yes. So it's just exciting to that is to have people. What a what a neat place to be pouring into people. Yeah. What a what a great gift you are to the body of Christ in general. Pastors. What a great gift you are to us. And this like you you are seriously someone that is it's a blessing to have you Mm -hmm. here on this on this podcast and in this church I mean, like it's it, you're such a, a warm thank you welcoming smile every time we get to see you mm-hmm. like i love it and i think people are going to be blessed by this extremely blessed mm-hmm. well thank I you it was so great too. it was really great oh, thank you for doing this with us yes did you have fun you. i did oh. i did we always love these i do i do there was one thing i'm going to just point go out no please because it's a big on our hearts mm-hmm. with the the new building stuff yes. if somebody's listening to it and doesn't know mm-hmm. that we're in a building project go we'll link our website at the bottom yes. where you can get all the information about it and make sure that it's in the show notes but heritageofhit.com is real easy to find right so if someone is interested in knowing what god is doing for for heritage of faith right now as it relates to this building project i want to make sure they know about that absolutely so yes perfect yes yes we're good yeah yes this was good again <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're listening, again, thank you so much for listening. You guys know where you can catch us on all the major show networks, podcast players, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, iTunes. all that. We are on Instagram. If you like having that kind of social vibe, we are there. (laughs) Um, We have an amazing team that does shorts and stuff. But uh, beyond that, we can't wait to see you again or play you again next Friday. Yeah. Next Friday, another winning conversation. Thank you guys so much. We'll talk to you soon.